Well, what is up, all of our Liberty-loving friends? This is another fantastic episode of Good Morning Liberty. My name is Nate Thurston, and across from me is Mr. Charles Chuck Thompson coming in to celebrate the victory of manhood today and just all the power that we have accrued over all of this time. How are you doing today, Chuck? Hey, I mean, you speak for yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Today, I'm going by Carly. Okay. Oh, okay. I got for the conversation. Yeah. Yes. I got you. So for, yeah, you can call me Carly for now. Just removing one letter. (laughs) Yeah. That's all you got to do. And uh, that way I can speak on this issue. I just want to make sure. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the abortion. I was thinking about your nickname if you remove that letter, <laughs> your nickname that you go by um, if you remove the same letter for Carly. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just just saying. You don't have to say it out loud. No, I'm not going to. Yeah. Everyone else, just do your own research on that one, okay? <laughs> All right, so this is Carly good Carly and Natasha. Oh, are, Nate and Chuck coming at you right now. Or Carly, however he wants to go. Okay, so the the reason we're joking around about this stuff, it's all just total jokes, is because there is some big news that, of course, you probably saw on your Twitter machine or something like that. So we'll be talking a little bit about the Supreme Court today on Good Morning Liberty. We talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of meaning every single day of the week when we want to. We so talk if, about life, mm-hmm. liberty, and the pursuit of meaning Exactly on this show. Exactly. So not choice, liberty, in the pursuit of meaning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're actually not even coming out with any strong opinions on this stuff no. today, unlike the Supreme Court. So, uh, which they didn't want to either. But anyway, okay. So the news is, Politico leaked a draft opinion. Politico didn't leak it. No, someone leaked it. To they Politico. leaked it to Politico. Sorry, Politico published. They published the leak, and I'm sure the FBI raided Politico this morning. More than likely, that's exactly uh, yeah. The only thing that I would know, and probably the person running that's in prison by now, but uh, they are actually uh, going to be in. They are calling for an investigation. I heard uh, one of the other Supreme Court justices calling for the FBI to investigate this. How did this leak occur? From what I can tell, it's about the first time that something like this has happened. That's not true. Actually. Is it not? Because Politico said that it was. Nope. It's happened okay. about 15 to 20 times, all dating all the way back to like 1865. Well, okay. Well, yeah. let Politico know to take that out of their article. Fortunately, I, I did. I was on the Twitter machine last night. And okay. I did see. Uh, it was a man, though. He was saying all these things. I think was a man. He mm. looked like he identified as one. But he had posted all, literally all the is- instances of a of Supreme Court leaks and I did go look them up to make sure that they were real, and yeah. they were. Okay. So there were, I can't remember, there were about 15 of them somewhere around there. So this has happened before. It, it's they're, they're calling it unprecedented. It's not. The actual opinion written of the court some came out it. beforehand. Not the whole thing, some of Or it. just like what they were going to do what came out What they were going bef- to okay. do, yes. Maybe it not happened. the actual opinion. It happened Roe v. Wade. Okay, so we'll confirm that or deny it later on. We'll see uh, what exactly the case is. This was the first draft. It was written by Alito. We've got some excerpts from it today. Uh, as far as the leak is concerned, I had a couple. I had a couple ideas on why it, it came out. One is because no one's talking about all the hypocrites that gathered at the Met Gala last night. All right, last year we got to talk about AOC and like her tax the rich dress and and all that stuff you know and how much they were paying we don't even get to talk about it this year no one's talking about the maskless white house correspondence no. dinner because everyone was required to be vaccinated and boosted yeah just not to be there including joe biden <laughs> pointed out your fox news friends tom said amazingly the war in ukraine just ended it's, Co- it's yeah not even happening covid's gone COVID. war in ukraine is over mm-hmm. our economy is looking better than ever we have record job growth uh, Biden's poll, num- poll numbers are going to jump after this, by the way. Probably. Guarantee you. Mm-hmm. People just yeah. uh, need to have something that they're mad about. So let's clarify a little bit more, as Nate alluded to on this show, as we're joking around, because to have this conversation about abortion, to have this conversation about Roe versus Wade and all of that, we must identify ourselves as women for this, <laughs> because if not, all, we're, all the feedback we're going to get is just how we're mansplaining, Mm-hmm. And we can't have an opinion because we don't have a universe. A uh, universe. We don't have a uterus, which yeah. births the universe. Yeah, because we hold the universe in, within. By the way, <laughs> um, physics. You do the math. 
Anyway, so we don't have a uterus, and they're like, well, you just can't even talk about this. And so, well, today, thanks thanks to our culture, we can identify ourselves as women. Not that we know what it means, because we're not biologists either. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be talking about uh, birthing person's rights. That's so we can say that. And birth person's rights. And birth, yeah. <laughs> and unalived fetuses' rights. Yep, yep, yep. If they have any. The other reason, by the way, the, you know, the joke about the Met Gala, that's what I said last night. That's why this came out. I wanted to discuss the leak real quick. The other reason to me is more obvious. This is a fundraising ploy for the midterm elections, and it's to get people all amped up. Now, they could have gotten people. That's definitely the main reason. Yeah, they could have gotten people amped up even if they let the opinion come out in June when it was supposed to. This is more, to me, it, it speaks more to fundraising because they need more time to actually run all of these campaigns. And they can also stir up some attention on some more state elections. You might see Democrats focusing more on state elections as well because now the call is going to be that you're going to have to overturn your state governments also. Those tyrannical democracies where the majorities voted for those people and now you disagree with what the majority is doing even though you support majority rule uh now you're gonna have to just you know work on what majority is well, in control and this is evidenced by all of the pundits coming out talking about elections already mm -hmm. so this literally this broke yesterday uh yesterday afternoon i believe and it wasn't but mere seconds went by and they were already calling for making sure that you vote so they could codify. They want to. There's this buzzword going around called codify. They want to codify Roe. Who cares about Wade? They want to codify <laughs> Roe in uh, in the in Congress and make it nationwide and those different types of things. Well, that would still, to me, that could get challenged by the Supreme Court again, and it would still be a question as to whether or not that law would even be able to stand. Now, that law that they're pushing right now is the Women's Health Protection Act, which I don't even know what the first word means. I'm not, I, do they mean like birthing person's health protection act? I'm not exactly sure. I think so. We could probably assume that. Um, yeah. So. It's, this is egregious that in 2022, we'd be trying to push through that type of insensitive bill language. It's, yeah. That's to me. Literal, it's got patriarchy written all over it. Yeah. Okay, so we got a few we got a few uh, excerpts here from the leaked opinion. It was the first draft, and maybe Alito is very embarrassed because he was going to make it way better or something like that. You know, I feel bad for him today. And and so let's go through just a little bit of this. Do you want to read a couple of them? I'll sure, read a yeah. couple of them. How do you want to do it? I know you well, like Supreme Court stuff. Let's do that. So Justice Alito delivered the opinion of the court. It's not opinion yet, by the way. So just have to make sure everybody's aware this hasn't actually. Uh, been issued from the Supreme Court. Votes could change, by the way. They could. They could. Um, but uh, so anyway, this is the uh, this is a draft, a draft. We don't know which version. First draft. This says right above where I cut off. Okay, first yeah. draft. It's the first rough draft. Mm -hmm. You know, when you guys were in school. Anyway, uh, it says abortion presents a profound moral issue on which Americans hold sharply convict conflicting views. Now, I'm going to stop it there because <laughs> there are sharply conv conflicting views. It's literally just about 50-50 uh, in America. Now, if you remove all the men from this conversation, which I like doing because I hate, you know, even though I hate straw mans, I still want to defend against them and like literally set up the argument to where you, there's no straw man or attack or whatever that could literally bring the argument. What about a straw woman, though? Logic. Or a straw Woman. I hate it when people make straw woman arguments. Those are the worst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to outlaw those. Yeah. All you have to do is say, be quiet. <laughs> when you hear calm, that. Down. calm down. <laughs> if we could get everyone on Twitter to just calm down right now. <laughs> Has anyone tried that yet? Yeah. Then that works. <laughs> anyway, so we'll just remove men from this. Not that we know what men are either, but we'll just remove We've them. We've established that. Basically 50-50 of, of uterus possessing persons disagree on this issue. That's like literally split down the middle. So anyway, 
Some believe fervently that a human person comes into being at conception and that abortion ends at innocent li- ends an innocent life. Others feel just as strongly that any regulation of abortion invades a woman's right to control her own body and prevents women from achieving f- achieving full equality. Still others in a third group. Uh, well, can I stop there? Sure. There is no such thing as full equality. <laughs> okay. Like, look, the unfortunate thing, I will say, and and I I will empathize and say that it does suck. Other people will say it's a blessing. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't have to be unfortunate. Exactly. Some others will say it's a blessing. It all depends on what you believe or feel or whatever. But look, in biology, there is a particular subset. Are you a biologist? No, I'm not. Okay. I did study some biology, though, so I, I'll just give you that knowledge okay. that these professors bestowed upon me. Okay. So uh, <laughs> there is a particular subset of a species, and this is all throughout uh, many animals, not just humans, that have the duty of uh, producing, off, of nurturing and caring and producing offspring to continue that species and in ma- in mammals, not just humans, in mammals that falls to the female. They have uh, the the birthing person or birthing cats or lions, dogs, bears. Oh my! Any of them, they're yeah. the ones that have to um, you know house that process. I'm really glad we have you here to explain this to all of us. Well, I, what I what I don't I, I hate the argument of like well this prevents women from achieving full equality. Like, so what, where do we stop? Do we don't, do we make sure that everyone's the same height, the same weight? Everybody has the same color of hair. You have a, Nate, you have a right to blue eyes and by golly, you don't have them. I would look really weird with blue eyes, but you have, you should have a right to it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So all these, that the minority of people running around here with blue eyes and the rest of us with brown eyes, it's just not fair. So anyway, I just wanted to make that point clear. Um, There's no such thing as full equality, okay? I'm always going to be taller than Nate, unless my legs get cut off like my dad. (laughs) But as of right now, for the foreseeable future, I'm always going to be taller than Nate. And is that fair, Nate? Um, I don't care. Uh, I'm just wondering. I don't have to buy taller doors for my house, so I guess, (laughs) you know, there's some benefits. There are, and you don't hit your head. No probably. one stares at me when I walk in a room. <laughs> Nearly as <You> often. Know? <laughs> All right, continuing on here. Still others in the third group think that abortion should be allowed under some but not all circumstances, and those within this group hold a variety of views about the particular restrictions that should be imposed. For the first 185 years after the adoption of the Constitution, each state was permitted to address this issue in accordance with the views of its citizens. Then, in 1973, this court decided Roe v. Wade. Even though the Constitution makes no mention of abortion, the court held that it confers a broad right to obtain one. It did not claim that American law or the common law had ever recognized... (laughs) Let me get to the... Such a right. Had ever recognized such a right. And its survey of history ranged from the constitutionally irrelevant to the plainly incorrect. And there's an example here. It's assertion that abortion was probably never a crime under the common law. After cataloging a wealth of information having no bearing on the meaning of the Constitution, the opinion concluded with a numbered set of rules, much like those that might be found in a statute enacted by a legislature. So he's basically saying there that they kind of legislated from the bench with Ro- Roe v. Wade. They in, in Roe v. Wade, they had the trimester rules. And the, the first, you could basically have no restrictions. The second, you could kind of have some. The third, the states could make the restrictions if they wanted to. And I, I will say I somewhat disagree with some of the uh, reasoning, the rationale behind some of the, I I know that this is conflicting, that there's a lot of conflicting views on this. And I'm not saying that I have the answer for it, but I, we are going to have to figure out whether or not this comes down to an issue of rights. To me, it's going to be a question of whose rights trump whose rights. Is it the right of the birthing person or the right of the baby that is going to trump the other person's rights? 
To me, that's going to be the question that I don't know if we're ever actually going to answer. And even if we do answer it, it's just going to get overturned again later because people are so split down the middle on this. And I the, mean, Dr. Seuss said, he's a doctor, mm-hmm. obviously, Dr. Seuss. Okay. Expert. He said a person's a person no matter how small. There you go. <laughs> yeah, heard it here first, that's, folks. So um, until we figure out whose rights Trump whose, I don't think we'll be able to solve this problem any Basically, a lot of what you're going to hear and even some of my thoughts on this are that this is such a conflicting issue. There are so many sides to this that we'll never be able to decide it. Okay, that is true, right? That That is true, and maybe we won't. But also, there's a lot of conflicting opinions on whether or not someone can take my money without my permission. I mean, people are pretty split on that issue, but we still have pretty strong beliefs on whether or not I have a right to keep my money or whether or not I have the right to put whatever I want into my body or anything like that. Like, and we're pretty split on that issue, and people probably aren't just going to come together on that. But that comes down to a question of rights. Who has the rights in that? Do you have the right to someone else's property? Do I have the right to my own property? And it's pretty easy to answer that question. In that case, uh, you're not saying that one of the parties is going to die because of the decision unless you're talking about someone who is dependent on another and another person's income, which we're going to talk about the dependency issue with abortion here in a little bit. Also, it's a kind of interesting arguments being made on, on all the sides. Um, I I will say to that, which is, you know, there, there may be pieces in here that I disagree with, but I want to speak from a standpoint of uh, what I believe to be Liberty and what I believe to be, the right thing when it comes to what the Supreme Court is doing. I think if this opinion holds that my belief that is that it is the right opinion for American law, and I'm not saying that it's the right opinion on whether or not I agree with abortion. I like, I want to remove that from the conversation. And the reason why is because, and we talk all the time as libertarians about how the Supreme Court is usurping its power and it, it shouldn't be able to decide this. And the Tenth Amendment, nothing enumerated in the Constitution should be left up to the state, or anything not enumerated in the Constitution should be left up to the states and to the people. Uh, so we talk all the time about how you know the Supreme Court is just opinions and we shouldn't, they, it's, it's not law or whatever, even though a lot of people exclaim that whenever the Supreme Court issues an opinion, it becomes the law of the land. So... I literally want to exclude all of that, exclude abortion, everything. I think this is the right decision to make in American law in so fact that issues like this that are not specifically delegated to the federal government in the Constitution should be left to the states and the people. And that's why we have a First Amendment protection, because where this issue belongs, much like taxation or any other issue, is in public debate. Yeah. Right? And this is what Ron Paul talked about a lot, is that it should be left up to the states. Uh, we should let the literal, like the people closest to you, decide what is best for you and your community when it comes to these types of regulations and, and the matters and interest in protecting life. And I think that that is enshrined in the Constitution, by the way. Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created by, by you know, know the thing. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's how I remember it. So life, liberty, and property. Okay. So the the big words and here. And the debate here, but I want to say with to that. So we know that the three fundamental rights as libertarians is life, liberty, and property. And the debate with abortion is not whether or not a woman has control over her body. That's not the debate, actually. The actual debate when it comes to abortion is, is the fetus alive or not? Is it a, to me, the question is, is life? does the fetus or baby or whatever we're going to call it today have rights that are to be protected the same that we would protect the rights of every other human being and, and do those rights extend to the baby. And in the case of what the mother is wanting to do and having an abortion, which person's rights trump the other person's rights. And so I do agree with you that this opinion is, is correct. I think we've talked several times that Roe v. Wade was not good constitutional law whatsoever if they want to try it with something else then i think that that they can try to do and and one thing that everyone needs to realize is that you know this doesn't just make abortion illegal everywhere i have seen a lot of people saying it being illegal um 
it's going to be left up to whatever your state wants to do. Now, it might end up being the case that about half of the states are going to end up outlawing abortion. And maybe they'll leave some specific instances where it'll be okay uh, when it comes to life of the mother, or rape, incest, stuff like that. But there will be about half the states, or I think it's about 20, 26 of them, that are going to have pretty strict laws that are going to go past what Roe v. Wade uh, would have allowed. So um, well, let's see what he what he also had to say here. He said he, we hold... Well, real quick question from the live group, which is who decides when the fetus is alive? Congress, the people, the medical community? That answer is, <clears> and we can uh, one day maybe take a really deep philosophical dive on perception and reality um, because different cultures have different beliefs, but the driver of that is culture, right? I mean, you know, we have fundamental truths, right, of life, liberty, and property, but those still are only held up, just like we talk about the market, right? What has value? Well, things that are perceived to have value, right? So we, through uh, through thousands of years of human history, have, have and these ideas are, are old, they're old, old as can be, okay? And, and he mentions here common law, English common law, and those different types of things. We have, throughout culture, decided that life is valuable. Now, previously, and or in some cultures today, it may not be. Um, well, the question is not really, is life valuable? It's what is life? That's, that's really the question yes. you're talking about. And I don't think that that's decided by culture because that could be a pretty slippery slope. I think that's an objective truth that we just don't really, uh, we, well, we don't really know yet. We but, could well, think what, that we know it, but we might be wrong. But to the question of who decides what a fetus is life, I think that's, that is culture. And that's why it needs to be up for public debate. You have to convince people of your side or not. Like, you know, again, Nate and I have said this plenty of times that we don't think a law is actually going to solve the problem of abortion. It doesn't. People are still going to want to. It doesn't solve the problem of poverty or anything else when we want to help people. You have to convince people that your argument is correct. And that's why public debate in the culture is so important, is, is having the moral high ground, so to speak, convincing people like anybody you love not to get an abortion because, hey, like, I love you and I don't want that for you, let's say. I'll just say, you know, we, we mentioned before, this is just going to be like our conversation that we had on the phone earlier. So just excuse all the random back and forth and all that stuff throughout the podcast. But um, the issue I have with the public debate idea, I think it's good to make this local or at least I don't think that Roe v. Wade was a was a good constitutional decision. Uh, as far as the Supreme Court is concerned. The issue I have with the public debate idea is that the public debated and they own, uh, you know, whatever percentage of my stuff they decided they own. And so we're still getting away from the objective truth and fundamental natural rights that, that people have. The public can debate and decide that you don't have any rights if they want to. Now, they might be wrong when they do that, but it doesn't change whether or not you do have those rights. And so, to me, the public debate and what they decide, like, the, okay, so do my rights change based on the makeup of the populace? Do my human rights change based on the makeup of the town that I live in? No, I still have the same rights. It just depends on whether or not those people are going to recognize them or not. And so I think... Well, fundamentally, they don't. So I'm not saying that the rights actually change. Yeah. But whether or not culture accepts them, that's the difference. For instance, gay marriage, right? I mean, well, for a long time in human history, there's nothing wrong with being gay. Not even in Florida, <laughs> right? And then culturally... Couldn't say it, though, still. Yeah, I couldn't say it. Mm -hmm. The Spanish wouldn't let you say, no. say gay down there. And then culturally, that kind of shifted um, as the, let's say, the Christian faith grew more so in the uh, starting a couple thousand years ago. When that, that shifted culturally to where it was, you know, wrong. And then now it's shifting again to where it's not wrong. So those types of things do ebb and flow. And that's why I say when it should be left up to public debate is because that's the premise and the area in which it should take place because what is actually right and wrong? Mm -hmm. Do we know that? I don't think we do. So an old thing that I brought up a bunch of times is some people think that abortion is murder. There's a large portion of the population that think that abortion is murder. And, and so since those people 
you know, what I'm going to keep saying here is we're not, we're probably not going to come to an agreement on this. Since those people think that it is murder, uh, they would probably also disagree with a state legalizing murder in any, in any other way, even if they had a public debate on it and the local population decided that they were going to legalize murder. That's how a lot of people actually see abortion. Now, because the public debated and they decided that you could legalize murder doesn't mean that anyone's rights changed or it became okay for that to happen. And in fact, like I've said before, if a state legalized murder, I think the federal government would have a job in coming in and saying, no, no, actually you can't, you can't allow people to just kill other people yeah. for, for no reason. And they would actually have a job to come in and protect whatever rights are enshrined in the constitution. Like the purge was just a movie problem here. <laughs> abortion, not exactly enumerated out in the constitution, not exactly something that says that, that, that there is a right, but it does say right to life, liberty and property. This is a muddy issue, man. I, this is a big old cloudy mess, mm -hmm. you know? And I it, can't hardly see straight. And the, 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 the problem that we're always going to run into is that you're not going to fix this with a Galdern law. You're just not going to. Mm -hmm. We already fixed this, right? In 1973, we solved this problem. Boom, it's done. We don't have to worry hey, about this anymore. Y'all buckle up. Nate just took his glasses off. <laughs> I put them on so I could take them off when I got into my rant. Y'all buckle up yeah, for this. It's a big deal. I like your point earlier. Like, So we, we decided for this show that we were just going to have a conversation. Like, Nate and I don't know the answers, right? We are participating in the public debate, so to speak. And all we're trying to do is is bounce ideas off of each other to try to expand our knowledge and, and expand the idea and figure out like, okay, how does this interwork like with our view of Liberty or, or, and, or, and how does it work for the, the view of Liberty overall? And so none of this conversation has anything to do with us knowing the answer. If you came here to find out the answer on what <laughs> you should feel about the Supreme court leak overturning Roe v. Wade, you came to the wrong place. I can tell like you, Nate, though, like personally on my level, I'm never going to have an abortion. Just not going to happen. <laughs> I guarantee you I would never do that. You would okay? bet money on it. I would bet money on it. And since I would never do it, I'm not going to let anyone else do it either. <laughs> <laughs> so, You'd put your house on that. I w I, yeah, I guarantee it, man. I bet everything on that. You'd put your Who wife, wants to have a bet right now? You'd put your wife's house on no. that. Well, she can have one if she wants to. Yeah. <laughs> we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. This is the big the big words here, bringing out the big guns. We hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. The Constitution makes no reference to abortion, and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provisions, including the one on which the defenders of Roe and Casey now chiefly rely, the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. That provision has been held to guarantee some rights that are not mentioned in the Constitution, but any such right must be deeply rooted in this nation's history and tradition and implicit in the concept of ordered liberty, what you're going to hear a lot since he spends a lot of time in things deeply rooted in the nation's history or people saying that that means we're just going to legalize slavery. Uh, the other, I wanted to talk about the privacy thing real quick. So as they, as they go through this, I did find one concerning thing. Uh, when it comes to the privacy. Now, I agree that the privacy right for Roe v. Wade is not not good. To me, that just doesn't apply. You know why it doesn't apply to me? Because if you're basically making the argument that the, the, you're not talking about the rights of any, you're not, you're not considering the right of the baby or anyone else, you're saying this is between a woman and her doctor, right? That's that's it. And the government doesn't have any any business getting involved in that whatsoever. Well, Okay, do we apply that to anything else? Can you just say, well, this is between a person and their doctor, so therefore you can take whatever experimental medication, whether or not it's been approved by the FDA. Your doctor can prescribe that if they want to. Hey, privacy, look at Roe v. Wade. Uh, can you do a assisted suicide? That's fine. Anyone can do that. That's no Last problem. I That's checked, between a person mate. and their doctor. Last I checked, there are no regulations in healthcare. That's right, because of, cause of privacy. It's unfettered capitalism yeah. in the healthcare market. Because of privacy. That's driving up the cost of everything, yeah. by the way. So they say Roe, Which, however, by the way, is completely facetious because <laughs> the healthcare market, as we know, is the, one of the most heavily regulated markets there is. So uh, Roe, however, was remarkably loose in its treatment of the constitutional text. It held that the abortion right, which is not mentioned in the Constitution, is part of a right to privacy, which is also not mentioned. And that privacy right, Roe observed, 
have been found to spring from no fewer than five different constitutional provisions, the 1st, 4th, 5th, ninth, and 14th Amendments. Now, I kind of felt like he was giving a little dig at the right to privacy right there, but he is correct. The word privacy is not in the Constitution. There are other things that are said in the Constitution that kind of seems like it's what we call privacy. You That's know. right. But the way, the way that was said to me, he said, Roe, the right to privacy... Roe observed have been found to spring from the first, fourth, fifth, ninth, and fourteenth amendments. That kind of felt like he was saying that they were wrong about that. And I would disagree on that because I do think your right to privacy, not saying that applies to abortion, but your right to privacy does spring from the first, fourth, ninth, fifth, and fourteenth and eighty seventh amendments and the thirty first. You know, and, and just fundamental rights of nature. Yeah, just it's a natural, natural right. I mean, the fourth, the Fourth Amendment, in and of itself, I think, is enough. Where it says you have the right to be secure in your person, papers, and effects. So that includes um, that includes men and women. I don't even have to be a biologist to say that because it says person. Yeah, you know, the right to be secure in your person, papers, and effects, meaning basically you and the things that. <laughs> are near you, the things that are in your control, you have the right to not be hassled about those things. Um, Amanda mentioned, uh, watch this be a hoax. I did see, I cannot remember, uh, let's see, is it Robert? No, one of the other justices, the one that was calling for the FBI investigation into the leak, uh, basically through this investigation, they did confirm that this was a real leaked document of the first draft of the of the opinion. Uh, through uh, today they had confirmed that so last night when it first came out people were questioning whether or not it was even real and uh, you know a lot of people talking about how it could have just been totally made up and sent over to Politico and and today they are (laughs) that's part of the hoax it's a really big hoax they're all in on it they made up the whole document yeah yeah (laughs) for sure this is just red oh red flag conspiracy let's see Um, we have one more quote here Uh, It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. The permissibility of abortion, quote, the permissibility of abortion and the limitations upon it are to be resolved like most important questions in our democracy by citizens trying to persuade one another and then voting. And that, that is actually from Casey. One of the things that was that from, t- from Scalia, my yeah. favorite justice, dissenting in Casey. Yeah, that was the, yeah, sorry, the dissent mm-hmm. from Scalia and Casey. So yeah. um, it's nice to see him make a reappearance there in, a, in an opinion. And see, that, like, so the reason why Scalia is one of my favorite justices, one, his sarcasm and tone in which he wrote his opinions and dissents, but two, he was very much a, uh, federal government has the least amount of power. This sh- almost everything should be left to the states and to the people. In fact, he even called himself. He's like, "Who are we to decide?" You know, we're nine lawyers sitting upon a court. Like, who are we to decide what should happen uh, when the Constitution is explicit in saying that these particular things should be left to the states and to the people? And so, um, nice to see him make a reappearance here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he sends his best. He from the grave. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a few things here on the idea of it being a state issue and people having a, a a hard time with that. Just wanted to point out something else that is a state issue. First off, murder. I mean, I think that's a state issue, but I already stated my issue with that, mm. <laughs> which is that I don't think would be okay with a state deciding that murder is legal. Probably say that the federal government's going to have something to say over the top of that. But, of course, that's probably going to be more cover than the Constitution and abortion is. Um, the other thing is people just saying, well, you're going to have to go to other states or this is going to put undue burdens on people that are in certain states and not on others. You know, in some states, I'm just going to point out, some states, if you smoke weed, you end up going to prison for a long time. And then another state right next to it, you just smoke it right there in public. So mm-hmm. we do kind of accept right now that, and I don't accept it, but we do accept that states are deciding that human beings have different rights in their in their different states. There's literally people in prison, probably in Tennessee, for things that people are doing right now openly in front of a cop in California. 
Actually, that's definitely the case. <laughs> it could be in any number of things. In some states, <laughs> you can't buy alcohol on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And even here in Tennessee, you can't buy it before noon because to, that's when the demons go away. So <laughs> annoying. You have to wait until noon, which the freaking football game starts at noon. And right. so you you got to plan your pre-gaming on mm-hmm. Saturday and get all the stuff to you. And it's the dumbest law It's so ridiculous. Ever. It's so dumb. And then in Illinois, they got drive through liquor stores. They do. We don't have any drive through liquor stores here in Tennessee. In Louisiana, they have drive through daiquiri stores, too. And this was pre-pandemic, yeah. by the way. When, as long as you didn't open the straw, <laughs> that was it was still considered a closed container. What I do want to say, though, is a, a birthing person, that just maybe on a more libertarian argument here, we know that states can determine how they are going to protect or enforce different rights and different laws, stuff like that. As a human being and as a birthing person, technically everyone has the same rights. Now, maybe we won't be able to determine exactly what that is because there is a bit of a conflict here between two different humans. One of them would uh, more than likely be in favor of banning abortion and the other one, you know, could be 50-50. We don't know. So until we decide what those rights are, what what human rights we're going to protect, it's going to be it's going to be just undecided flip flopping back and forth, just like we just had 50 years later. Uh, I don't think the problem is going to be solved really whatsoever. And, and I do want to say, I had another note in here that this is not for conservatives that are listening. It's really not as simple as murder. It might be wrong. It might be morally wrong. And we could agree on that. I don't think it's the same as murder. And the reason I don't think it's the same as murder is that if someone walked in here on camera right now and, and shot Charlie in the head while we were recording, pretty much everyone who saw the video later on TikTok when I got done cutting it up would agree that that was a murder that took place. Basically everyone, except for your local Satanist or something like that, mm-hmm. might not agree on that. But with abortion, somehow we're split 50-50 on it. And so it's clearly... To me, it's it, it's not the same. It's not the same thing as a murder. There, there is a difference here because well, to some people it is. Yeah. To others, it's not, and so it's. But what I'm saying is, I I will go out on a limb and say that it's not the same thing as murder because it's pretty clear if you take a sample of all of the human beings and their ideas around the world that people are split on this. And like I said, if someone just shot you right there in the head, they say, yeah, that's murder. And Unless half of them would only say if it was an abortion. Yeah, of course. Yes. I'm just saying unpro- yeah. unprovoked. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course is what I'm saying. So I do think that this is a, I do think that this is a lot different. I don't think it's that simple. And then Charlie's going to tell us about the eviction theory, which I think is the only, I think it's the only answer I well, do think it's the only answer that could, that the government could present. So when I think, yeah. So when I think about this from a privacy standpoint, the first thing I ask myself is where does privacy derive from? Because in in my view, we have three fundamental rights: life, liberty, and property. Okay, those are three fundamental things that derive themselves from self-ownership. I just call that self-ownership. He calls it self-ownership. I we like have to, one right. I like to break it out to three different ones, okay? Life, liberty, and property. So privacy falls under the umbrella of property, okay? Like I, I own myself and my property, and I should be secure in those things. Yeah, the property the, because of self-ownership. Exactly. <laughs> I said through self-ownership, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I am entitled to myself and my property and the production of my own cognitive ability and means. And therefore, I should, just like owning a property, I should be allowed to say who can come into my body and not. Right? It's, it's your body. That is true. I, I don't, I, I, I can't argue anything outside of that. Now, I, will, I, I do hear people that say, well, you develop a, a brand new organ called a placenta that the fetus is attached to that is completely separate from the, the woman's body, which is not true because the placenta plants itself on the uterine wall. Uh, anyway, 
So the, there obviously is a connection still. What I so when I track this logically through self ownership to property rights to privacy, that means that I should be allowed to invite anyone in, and at any time I can kick them out, even whether that is an unwanted visitor or a wanted visitor, okay? It, just like inviting Nate over to my house, I can extend the invitation. I could be praying about it. I could be wanting it and dreaming about it. And then when he shows up and he hangs out for a while and I no longer want them there, want him there, it is my right to evict him, to, to say to him, Man, I really wanted you here, and uh, we prayed about you coming to visit, and uh, things were good for a little while, even though I was kind of sick that you were there for the first, you know, couple weeks. Uh, but now I don't want you here anymore. Question. If uh, if you know that standing right outside your front door is a guy with a gun that's going to shoot whoever walks out the door, can you still evict the person and force them outside. You got a guest in your house or someone outside your house with a gun. Can you still force the person outside? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Yes. Just steel manning your, mm -hmm. your, your argument right there. You can't. Just making sure. So this comes down to the... Now, the, now, now people will throw into the argument, well, what if that person refuses to leave? Okay. Well, then you have a right to protect yourself if you're trying to remove that person and they try to cause harm to you, you have a right to protect yourself. Now, when I say that, that, that I, this is my logical process. The only theory that can make sense is Walter Block's theory of evictionism, meaning that a woman can get pregnant either by accident, uh, rape, incest, or how most pregnancies happen. They're planned. Okay. Or at least they're wanted. Okay, most women, most birthing persons don't get abortions. Okay, uh, so anyway, you could even plan to have a pregnancy, and the only difference is, is that you can't kill the fetus, you can't end the life that is continuing to grow, while when you remove it. So you the idea, to, the idea is that you uh, can't take an action to end the life, actively end the life, but you also cannot be forced to take care of the life also. That is dependent on you. You can't be forced to do that. Agreed. You are not able to be forced to do that, uh, force the birth if that is the case, and if nature takes its course, then that's one thing, but you, someone does not need to actively take that action of, of taking the life of the baby. That, that it's going to happen on its own. Mm -hmm. Or you could try, even try to save it, depending on what the time is. That's been one of my major things is that, you know, that I think that if you're at the, at the point of viability or even close to it, something like that, um, you, could, you could try to save the baby instead of doing the abortion, you know, you could, if it's possible. That mm -hmm. seems like a logical thing to do. Like if you were to force the birth and the baby could still live. Yeah. Then that seems now, possible. Let me contrast that to what I believe morally. Like so that this is my opinion when it comes to what we could actually codify in a law. Right? Like if we were to both respect property rights and life rights of both mother and fetus, okay? <clears throat> if we would respect both of those rights equally, as I believe we should, equal protection under the law, right? I believe I believe in law we should protect those rights equally then that is the only the only solution that I can think of. Now, I may be wrong, and people can point out where I'm wrong. Now, morally, I believe that that is still wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it, like my own personal beliefs, I would hope and pray that the people that I love that are able to give birth uh, would not choose that route, that they would choose to have the baby um, and because new people are awesome. And I think they're fun. I have a, a son of my own who's a lot of fun. Um, he's also autistic, by the way, which we could have found out in womb if we wanted to. But regardless, like I want him here, you know. Um, and so I, 
that would be my personal belief is, is I am a pro-life libertarian. I yeah. am a Ron Paul libertarian. I'm that libertarian. <laughs> okay. Yeah. However, I do have to separate my own personal belief from what I think could be possible and logical in law and respect people's rights on both sides. But I think you have to respect both rights equally. And the only thing that can make sense is evictionism theory in my mind. That's, that's literally the only logical sense. That's what I was about to say. It's the only thing that respects the rights of both human beings. The, the birthing person is not forced to carry the baby to term. That's where I come down on the abortion stuff or outlawing abortion. That means that I would be forcing someone to carry a baby to term. And I, I can't do that, even though I think it would be morally wrong to, to have the abortion or maybe morally wrong to, uh, to get pregnant because there's ways that you can prevent that from happening or whatever. That's not really the, the, uh, the point right now. Um, I can't force the woman to carry the baby to term. And so the only thing that would respect both rights is the woman can force a birth early but the only thing that you're changing is that the, the doctor that is there would not then actively take the life of the child or they wouldn't do it before the, the birth happens or anything. In fact, maybe they would save the life. Now, you could even make the argument under some of our other terrible laws that we have, like, say, Imtala, something like that, where they have to take care of, some, stabilize someone that's in need or try to save someone that is in need, that when you force that birth, that there's someone that's in need right then, and they have to do whatever they can to take care of that person. Which now, I also morally agree with. Well, like I, think, I don't like forcing the doctor to do that, but no, I don't, think I don't want to force them to do that either. Yeah, I don't think you should force them to do that, but but most doctors do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's part of our culture as well. Morally, you would want them to do that. Yeah. Now, where people will start to argue about that is what about the money it would cost to do all of this? You know, we're going to have a lot of people that are on welfare that can't afford their babies, or if you're going to have these forced births, Charlie, uh, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, the uh, the those, those NICU costs... They're, they're pretty high, you know, and uh, those incubator costs that, that the kids have to go, you know, my brother was in an incubator for two months in, uh, in, in Barnes Hospital in St. Louis. And I can show you a list of about three million families that would be willing to pay those costs and adopt that kid. Maybe. Because yeah. there's about three million families that are trying to adopt that can't. So, so my, my thing would be really like a leftist socialist saying that because there's a cost associated, we shouldn't do it. Really? Where are you going to draw that line? What's the other things that you're saying are too expensive for people to worry about paying for? So where's your line that you're going to draw on health care for well, things that are too expensive? I'm saying people would be voluntarily willing. Yeah. I hope that's the case, but there's also a, there's a lot of kids that need adopted right now that aren't that aren't getting adopted. There's a lot of kids in the system mm -hmm. that need adopted. So Not for a lack of families that are willing to adopt, though. Yeah, that, then we talk about the system of adoption and how expensive it is to do that. And I I would work want to work on fixing that and making it cheaper to adopt kids. And before anyone makes the argument that well people will just adopt them, okay. How many? I'm not meeting this to you, Charlie, but how many kids have you adopted? There's a bunch of kids that need adopted right now. Don't say everyone but me will adopt the kids. You know, they'll, they'll do it for sure, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm saying there's right now, a, it's like a current list of like yeah. 3 million families trying to adopt in it's, the United States. So we got to fix that system. Yeah. Why is that so hard to, to do? Because the government's awesome. They do everything right, you exactly. know, for sure. Um, All right, y'all. Well, we got to wrap up because I got to go. I got a few more things I'm going to go through. So, so you just Nate's going to spread his uh, man opinion. Yeah. More is this going to be Nate or Natasha, Natasha. for the rem <laughs> for the remainder of this show? Natalie, Natalie, okay. Natalie. That's Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we got to do right now. Yeah. Amanda so, wants to debate me on this whole eviction thing. She says it's completely kaput. Kaput? <laughs> it's it's it doesn't worst, work, huh? It's the worst argument. She said. Really? Yeah. So I, I find that to be interesting. I think to me it's the only fair it's the only fair comp compromise mm -hmm. I can actually come up with in my mind, uh, because I just can't force I just can't force a woman to carry the baby, just can't do it, and I don't see why you have to kill the baby in the in the womb. Why not just see, why not force the birth and see what happens? So I don't know. Maybe we'll just have a debate on that sometime. Some of the other arguments. Uh, that you'll hear on this. I saw this trending earlier today was hashtag my body, my choice. 
people got to be careful making that argument these days, that whole my body, my choice thing. You know, how about this? You can get an abortion uh, unless you work at a corporation that has more than 100 employees. And in that case, we're just not going to allow it. There you go. Problem solved. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about my body, my choice anymore. We talked about the welfare thing. I think that's a bad argument for people on the left to make. Is You're saying that you don't want to do it because it's going to cost money? I mean, geez, what value can you place on a human life? Apparently, there is some kind of a value that people are going to place. So what are we going to see from this? You're going to see people working to codify the right to an abortion. And more importantly, the bigger thing you're going to see is the push to elect people that say that they are going to codify this as a right for women to be able to have an abortion. And that is why this leak happened. And it's not just to get people all worked up about it because that could have happened in June. And in fact, it would have been better for it to happen in June if you're trying to get voters worked up, really, because it would be more fresh in their minds. But the reason it's happening so early right now is for fundraising. That's really what it is. They want to be able to get some fundraising from people. So they're going to be talking about that. I see people talking about expanding the court. You know, we're just going to have to do that. We're going to abolish the filibuster, expand the court, pass the Women's Health Protection Act, whatever that means. And that's how we're going to solve this problem. We can't listen to what the Supreme Court says because we got a bunch of Trump nominees in there and he was an illegitimate president, you know, put in there by Vladimir Putin. I've already seen all those arguments coming out. And the, it really is going to be a mess. I heard Tim Poole saying that this is going to lead to a civil war. I don't exactly know that that's going to happen. It seems a little bit, uh, seems a little bit off to me. So um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty crazy time. If you guys have ideas on, if you, got a, if you got a disagreement with what we said on here today, like we said, I think we both come down on the eviction theory and uh, well, I'll, I'll read some of Amanda's comments on for why that's uh, such a terrible idea. It, it truly is the only thing that I can come up with, and it's the only compromise. Like Walter Block said, it's the only compromise that is still a principled compromise where you're trying to uh, protect the rights of both because there, there is an issue here. Like, does, does the baby have a, have a right to force the mother? You know, there's all kinds of questions here, and we've had 50 years of Roe versus Wade. We had the Casey decision as well. And we're, we still haven't solved this, and we're clearly not going to solve it. If the right wins right now and they get the, the, we got the majority in the Supreme Court and we get rid of Roe versus Wade, you think it's over after that? You think the problem's solved after that? No. It's just, just going to keep fighting over it for, for forever. So that's why I am interested in ideas that do come up with some type of a, uh, what I consider to be a principal compromise. If you have better ideas, let me know what they are. Send me an email. Nate at goodmorningliberty.us. I will respond to you uh, within the next month. I guarantee within the next month. I will try to go sooner than that, uh, but definitely within the next month. And I was going to mention in here also, Biden's already out there calling for uh, electing the right people, electing the right people in the states, at your local levels to fix this. And that's really what this is going to be about. And we might end up seeing this turn into more local politics, more of a local issue. Why is local politics so important? We might end up seeing that uh, maybe the Supreme Court has had too much power over time because maybe some states are still going to allow it. And what, what's going to happen? The, what's the federal government going to roll in with tanks or something like that? Well, what's going to happen? Maybe the state just ignores whatever the Supreme Court said because it was just an opinion. I literally wrote an article that was never published because I didn't completely finish it saying that uh, the the Trump appointees, and this was specifically with, uh, with ACB, was going to finally get the Supreme Court to about the amount of power that it was supposed to have, which was that it was issuing opinions. And then we're going to decide whether or not the... Um, whether or not the executive branch was going to enforce those. So anyway, it's a very, very interesting time. Bob McShay says, everyone go spam Nate. Go spam me. Go to Nate at goodmorningliberty.us. Send me, send me whatever your thoughts are on this. I'm very interested in it. Um, I, I don't have a, I, I don't have just a for sure opinion that's set in stone that I think should be written in the law yet. So let me know whatever it is. Go tell a friend, tell a family member. 
Let me know what you think. Subscribe, follow, leave a rating and review. When I say leave a rating and review, I actually mean it. If you haven't done that yet and you're like, well, I don't really want to pay the six bucks a month to watch live, but I wish I could do something because these guys are just so freaking awesome. Leaving a rating and review, that's one of the best things you can do. Because when someone searches libertarian or liberty or politics or whatever, we're more likely to show up in the search results when we have good ratings and reviews. So go and do that if you do all those things. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, have a good day and a good morning, Liberty. Their luxury homes and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah. Kleptocracy and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> but these are bad guys. This legislative package strengthens our law enforcement capability.